Okay, so welcome to the Avenira story. I'm excited about this one. They've acquired the Jundi South Gold Project. Now, before we get started, if you've got some questions, put it in the Q&A box down below at the end of the presentation. We will get to answer them. But without further ado, please welcome Brett Clark, the chairman, to tell you the Avenira story. Thanks, Brett. Hi, Kerry. Thank you very much. Uh, Avenira, so basically uh, we... Sorry, I'll get the uh, get the website going. Okay, we're at the right end of the presentation, so um, I love Zoom. Um, okay, so unlocking the potential of uh, Jundee South. So um, here's the normal uh, disclaimer and competent person statement. Uh, so if anyone wants that to read that at their leisure, then they can later on. Um, corporate snapshot. So. We have about 860 million shares on issue, unlisted options, uh, 60 mil of which 48 mil uh, set at uh, 2 cents and 3 cents and the remainder 12 mil are set at 2.5 cents. Top 20 shareholders hasn't changed too much in terms of percentage, but we have had a, a, a complete change of uh, top three shareholders over the last 12 months after we sold Baobab last year. Our market cap yesterday was uh, about 14.7 million and cash on hand uh, at the end of September was 5.33 million. We have absolutely no debt and uh, you can see the share price that's been tracking over the period of time uh, since the year to date. We have uh, two, two key projects, uh, the Jundee South project, which is, which is gold. Uh, we've mentioned to the market as late as last year uh, that we were moving into precious metals. We acquired the Jundee project around about uh, April this year, and we started our drilling program in the third quarter this year. Our other project is the Wanara project. It's a phosphate project. It's probably the largest uh, phosphate project in Australia and has, uh, has uh, probably the highest grade, and it's based in Northern Territory. And we've got a scoping study that's underway. Uh, just the leadership team, uh, so myself, uh, very much uh, pro project development, investment banking and operations experience. Uh, Kevin, Kevin is a lawyer, he's also involved in gold, gold projects as well, or mining, so chairman of Red5, and Winnie Lay had a uh, very talented uh, um, director with, uh, with an accounting degree, law degree, and a master's of... Uh, from uh, WA School of Mines. And COSEC, uh, Graham Smith, very experienced across several ASX companies. Steve Harrison has joined us as a chief geo. Steve, Steve's uh, experience is actually in the Jundee area. So he was working with uh, Great Central Mines in the decade before last and understands the area around Jundee very, very well. I've been on two field trips with Steve in the last six to seven weeks, and um, he doesn't need a GPS. He knows everywhere, every every road, every every nook and cranny. He knows where to go, especially. And Marcus Fliss, we've got Marcus on board as a consulting geologist and geophysicist. Um, immense experience in geophysics and has helped us uh, immensely with uh, interpreting our aeromag and uh, ground magnetic program. <clears throat> we've Avenir investment strategy. Um, we've wanted to diversify our commodity focus um, uh, from just being purely a phosphate uh, uh, producer and explorer. And we've indicated, as I said earlier, into the market uh, late last year that uh, we're looking into precious metals. We've got a particular fo focus on Western Australia. Many of our shareholders have said, don't go overseas anymore. Don't do anything in Africa. Don't do anything in uh, in Latin America. Just stay in Australia. So we've stayed in Western Australia. Key focus is is Jundee. So it's the Yandel Greenstone Belt, and we're looking at uh, look. We're looking at uh, other precious metal opportunities uh, around that area, but also within Australia. Work continues at the Wanara project in the Northern Territory, and we've got as as earlier in the corporate snapshot. We've got an experienced team with uh, project development, precious metals and uh, commodities. 
Uh, success Jundee South uh, project. Uh, project comprises tenements covering uh, a large land land area of 720 square kilometres. Um, it's in a it's in an area where there's major mines, including Jundee Gold Mine, Bronzewing, Dalo, uh, and there's also uh, exploration mines, uh, Flushing Meadows and also the exploration that's going on with Northern Star and Ramon and Gordas as well. So it's in the right postcode. Um, there is certainly a lot of prospectivity and there's a lot of history of uh, gold production in that area. We commenced drilling uh, in September and we're, we're uh, over halfway through our drilling program at the moment and we're looking at completing uh, towards the end of this quarter. Why the Yandel Greenstone Belt? Uh, uh, it's, it's an area that's uh, one of the few Arcan uh, greenstone belts containing several million, uh, million ounce uh, gold deposits. And we believe that uh, you know, there's, there's also other prospectivity around there which, uh, which uh, explorers just haven't touched yet. The, the, thing, with, uh, the thing with Jundee South is that uh, the previous geological model was very simple. Um, we're taking a different set of eyes to look at this, uh, very much a geophysics uh, uh, interpretation instead of geochem as it has been in the past. Um, much of the drilling has been very shallow, uh, RAB drilling. It's been very broad spaced. The supervision hasn't been very, very good. And uh, we found that uh, in some cases, the drillers just haven't been supervised. The new interpretation, um, you know, as I said earlier, the Yero Mag data, uh, we've been interpreting it with uh, some of the ground magnetic data that we've uh, commissioned over the past few months uh, so that we can highlight some of our target areas. Um, it's not a simple thin form, contains many structural uh, deformities, uh, considerable presence of mafic rock types, which present a preferred host for gold mineralization, very similar to Jundee and multiple regionally important structural features across the project area. Uh, we can see some of our target areas up there uh, that uh, we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so the significant uh, exploration potential. Um, so complex geology, uh, multi-phase structural preparation. Um, so the fluid, the you know, the aquiferous fluids and short-lived brittle structures that remobilize gold in the high-grade concentrations, you know, see, seeing a bit of quartz veining and uh, pervasive alteration and their hallmarks of uh, these processes. Uh, there's intrusive activity um, that uh, provides the heat engine, which is very similar to what's happened at Jundee, to drive both gold ferric bearing fluids and cause pervasive, pervasive action. Uh, geochemical indicators uh, that alert the presence of gold in the system, we're still interpreting and we're still using. Um, we've identified 24 high value targets and we've prioritised them uh, through one, two and three. And we're drilling the higher priority targets first and we're moving on to the lower pro priority targets next. Um, we're looking at, uh, we, we started an air core program. Uh, we believe that more definitive than a RAB program and we will also be looking at uh, a, an RC program next year. Um, we're expecting that uh, further targets will continue to be identified and refined over the time. Uh, very similar, very similar um, AeroMag compared to the Jundee gold mine. Um, very much, very much, uh, yeah, one of our targets, MF01. Uh, very similar to, to the way uh, Jundee Mine looks around there. MFO2, very much the same as well. The, uh, we've also completed a review, and it's more like a forensic review of historical drill data um, from several different sources. And when I say that, I mean the historical owners of uh, our projects um, in the past. And we didn't receive a lot of that information until probably about six to seven weeks ago. So just over 6,000 holes have been, been drilled. Um, there's been, you know, we've had an extensive effort. Um, many of the holes were drilled vertically as uh, using the RAP method. Um, and a lot of the interpretation just wasn't there. 
Um, we've had some, we've seen some pretty good intersections in some of the in some of the data that we've picked up. And what we're doing is we're realigning our, our drilling program at the moment to pick up some of those intersections and do some parallel holes with, with air core drilling, as well as uh, trying some different orientations with the air core drilling. Um, so we'll, we'll do that before, before uh, the end of the year. One hour of phosphate project um, and uh, the, the Nova Foss license. So one hour of phosphate project, uh, Northern Territory, it's uh, east of the Barclay Homestead on the Barclay Highway. Um, you fly in, fly in there into Mount Isa to actually get to it. Everyone thinks that you fly into Darwin and drive that, that distance, but uh, it's quicker to go through Mount Isa. Um, you can see the resource, the indicated and inferred uh, uh, levels there. And what we're finding with this project is uh, it is, it is uh, I'd say, the largest phosphate project in Australia. It does have its challenges um, uh, around distance from the port of Darwin. Um, however, it does have in excellent infrastructure as well. So the Northern Gas Pipeline runs through the project area to the north. Uh, there's also a high quality water source, uh, which is well below 500 uh, TDS, uh, north of the highway, which is just north of our project. And there's also Port and Rail to the west, Port and Rail to the west which is under capacity and it should allow for easy expansion of uh, Wanara at some stage. Um, scoping study has commenced uh, for concentrate and a monomonium uh, phosphate product and a diammonium phosphate processing, uh, processing uh, product, product, product and project. The key around this is that uh, with Wanara, we've got to look at a value added uh, commodity to actually ship the long distance to Darwin. Um, shipping a DSO or a direct shipping ore uh, in terms of a lump just doesn't cut it in terms of the distance. Uh, so, so you need a high value product. Nova Foss technology, um, historically we had an equity, we were original equity owners in Nova Foss, which was formerly called JDC back in, back in uh, the days before we sold our Baobab project in, in, Af in West Africa in October last year. Um, part of that sale process, um, we, we uh, don't have the equity anymore in Novafoss. However, we do have the ex exclusive Australian license for Novafoss technology. Uh, this technology is um, around an alternative process for Wanara for uh, phosphate production. And this technology uh, doesn't pre create a, uh, what we call a heavy metal waste product. So a lot of this project and this uh, pilot plan is in Florida. A lot of Florida um, um, phosphate uh, projects have, have uh, gypsum, which has uh, some heavy metal uh, background, background, background radiation. Um, the Nova Foss process produces a, a JROX product, which is completely benign as a waste product. <clears throat> it also produces phosphate, phosphoric acid. Um, cornerstone, cornerstone partners in there include the Florida Development Fund and, uh, and uh, Japanese industrials. Uh, so uh, we have exclusive license for this technology in Australia um, if uh, other phosphate producers want to use it uh, for their project development. And that's, uh, that basically sums up uh, Avenira. Um, our, our focus is our focus is on on gold at the moment. Um, we are we are focusing on Dundee South. We're focusing on our drill program. Um, we are looking at other projects uh, within the region, um, which which uh, you know will will inform the market in the future on on if there's if there's any transaction uh, potentially in the future. Um, it is an interesting time in the in the. In the life cycle of gold, I remember when I was at uh, WMC Resources 20 years or so ago, we uh, we were sitting at a gold price of 220 to 240 dollars an ounce, uh, with with a gold price close to 1900 1900 dollars an ounce. So uh, it's certainly a good time to be good time to be in gold and good time to be in precious metals. And uh, thankfully, we've got a a government uh, which has been very proactive in uh, 
ensuring that uh, the mining industry is protected during uh, COVID-19 as well. So the location of Western Australia has been excellent as well. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. Karen. Brett, thank you very much. Um, I love the reference to the fact that we can't get across to WA. You're all protected over there. The borders are shut. I'm stuck here over in Sydney. Can't get across there, but you're all doing a fabulous job. Thank um, you. What's that? Thank you. Um, I know that the focus is on gold, but before we go on that, I've just got a couple of questions. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, for those that are listening, if you've got a question for Brett, Pop it in the Q&A box down below. Just, just click on the Q&A, open it up, type the question. I'll see it and I'll ask Brett. Very, very simple. Got to love technology. Um, with the, um, the, you mentioned that the, one or the, the phosphate project up in the Northern Territory is quite a long way away from the port. So you need to upgrade it. Uh, is that a, a, an additional process? And is that, does that make it a little bit longer in terms of the end product? Uh, look, it, it is an additional process. So originally, Avenira, when when it was uh, the former name was Mine Makers, uh, we uh, you know, phosphate price was you know between three hundred and four hundred dollars a ton. Um, it was completely feasible to do a direct shipping ore. Um, the Avenira was also an ASX two hundred company at that stage. Um, Phosphate price is now for P, for 32% grade P205 um, is under $70 a tonne. Um, and so a value add needs to occur. And this value add, this value add is in the form of uh, extra secondary and tertiary processing um, uh, to produce a high value product. Uh, so DAP and MA, MAP uh, uh, phosphoric acid, um, yeah, it ranges anywhere in price between sale price any, between about four hundred dollars and seven hundred dollars a ton. So if you're shipping one ton of product at seven, at say five hundred dollars a ton versus one ton of product at sixty bucks a ton, mm. um, it certainly covers covers off a lot of your operating costs. And with um, with the Novafos process, uh, it is pretty energy efficient, uh, but obviously uh, there's a there's a cap out. Uh, capital capital cost impact uh, with having having extra secondary and tertiary processes in place. So yeah, we we're you know on one hand we're sitting and looking at uh, where the commodity price goes. On the second hand, we're we're also looking at refining refining scoping study to to look at which way we head uh, into into sort of a pre feasibility study. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you've got the exclusive license for Novafoss in Australia. Are you talking to other potential partners at the moment? Look, we 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 know that uh, other other phosphate producers or other phosphate explorers are fully aware of our Novafoss licensing. Um, you know, there was the transaction last year where CD Capital in London took over Verdant Minerals. Um, you know, I think it was a a $40 million transaction. Uh, they're fully aware of our licensing arrangement um, and the Northern Territory government uh, is also fully aware of our licensing arrangement. And uh, they're looking at uh, promoting bulk commodity projects in the Northern Territory. So look, there is a fair, fair amount of chatter around. Um, and I think it is, I think, you know, we, we certainly sit in the box seat around this new technology, which is, which we think is a game changer. Well, it certainly sounds like it from the from the numbers point of view. Uh, quick question here: When do you expect to complete the scoping study on the one or I can't even pronounce it one or a project? Um, yeah, at the moment uh, it's uh, been ref yeah the some of the final figures have been reviewed by the board at the moment. Um, we may go back. We may ba may may go back to the engineer to uh, refine the study further or look at another two options. Um, I'd suggest that uh, it'll be sometime in the first half of next year. Great. Look, I'm going to jump across to Jundee South now. I've got another question here. What will be your next step at Jundee South following the current Air Corps program? Uh, next steps for Jundee South are obviously to, to keep the, to get the uh, drill assays uh, interpreted. Um, there is, with the, with the industry, the drilling industry at the moment, uh, Six months ago, 
it would take two, two weeks for a turnaround of an assay. Now it's taking five to seven weeks. Um, so what we're, what we're doing is we'll, as we get the assays, uh, we'll start to build up our models and uh, we'll announce that hopefully, hopefully some of it before Christmas and, and uh, we'll, we'll move from there. In the future, um, we're looking at uh, starting up an RC um, drilling program in the early in the second quarter next year. Uh, that'll be either followed by, in parallel, a drilling, a, a diamond program or followed by a diamond program. We're not too sure at the moment. What we are doing is we're also booking, we're in the process of booking rigs because um, we're, we're noticing that uh, uh, a lot of companies have now got diamond rigs booked out for 12 months. A lot of companies have got uh, RC rigs booked out for at least the next six months. And it's not the availability of rigs, it's actually the availability of crews. That's, that's the key issue. So the industry is booming at the moment uh, and um, that's, that's good for drilling contractors, but probably not good for explorers at the moment. Yeah, well, uh, with the borders all uh, in, in an array, it's a little bit, oops, sorry about that. Um, excuse me, sorry okay. about that. Forgot to turn my phone off properly, Brett. Um, so I think you've answered this, Brett, but I, you know, it's a question, so I'll, I'll let you answer it as well. With all the, the attention on your gold projects at the moment, you are looking to build that asset uh, portfolio further. Um, can you talk a little bit more about not just Jundi South, but how you, how you're looking to build the portfolio in precious metals yeah in precious metals so look we we believe in organic growth so the organic growth is through through the drilling drilling program at jundee south we also believe in uh step change through through joint venture and acquisition um we we do we do have the support uh to be able to do that um but it's also about the right right projects um yeah, before yeah, last year, a lot of gold projects around the Yandel Greenstone Belt and, and other locations around Western Australia were actually reasonably priced uh, per ounce. Whereas as the explosion occurred in terms of uh, gold price this year, um, you know, vendors started look, talking about telephone book numbers yeah, for, uh, for gold projects. Yeah. So you need to ensure that uh, you, you pick up real projects I think I think uh, companies will pay good money for real projects. Obviously, we're not looking at, uh, you know, definitely not looking at uh, suboptimal projects. But as I remember, a long, long time ago, when I worked for uh, for Snow, I was a managing director at Snowden Mining Consultants about 20, 20 or well, 18 years ago. Hmm. Well, Phil Cern said to me, "Yeah, the thing about uh, resources is that." All of them will eventually be mined. It's all about cutoff grade and economics. And so, you know, what what is what is your cutoff grade now will be will be low, will be different in twenty years time. Mm. So, what what is not economic now will be economic in twenty years time potentially. So, um, yeah. So we need to reassess, and I think we do have a very good geological team, um, and we do have uh, external consultants who are very very familiar with uh, a lot of the lot of lot of the uh, lot, lot of the ground in Western Australia. Any final comments before I've got to wrap it up? We've run out of time again. These time it goes so fast. Brett, any final comments for those that are listening and are looking at Avenira as potentially? Well, this is a, a, a really good one to invest in at the moment. Um, yeah. Look, thanks, thanks, Kerry. Look, I think yeah, we've got a strong ge uh, geology team, a very strong team. Um, I think the difference with our company is we've also got project development experience. We actually have a team, including myself, uh, who've actually built projects from resource all the way through to operation. Yeah, multi hundred million dollar projects and small projects. And we know how to implement and we know how to bring projects to, to production. I think um, our, our board is very, very, very adept at, uh, at this and We've also, through through my investment banking um, background, you know, we have access to funding as well. Um, so I believe that uh, that's a good match for uh, moving moving Avenir ahead and moving the Jundee South project ahead and any other any other projects that we acquire in the future. 
Uh, Brett, I often say to people, it's not necessary just about the project. You've got to have the right people. Sounds like you've got a great team around you. Thanks so much for presenting with us today. Thanks, Gary. Okay, have a great day. Cheers.